stay tuned for the rest of the video. But first, let's have a word from today's sponsor, the Likewise app. Likewise is an app for getting Bro. personalized recommendations Fuck you. for movies, TV shows, and books based on your interests. Get back to the video. Ugh. It's been over a year since Marvel's Avengers released and communally disappointed a lot of people by not really being the game they were looking for. No I shit. I gave the game a more hopeful and middle-of-the-road review where I praised the other... Same. I bought the game. Then you know what happened a month later? It came on fucking Game Pass. Moments I liked about it. Mostly the linear levels of the main campaign and the character interactions in the story. Though Guardians of the Galaxy came along and blew... Avengers campaign out of 10 was like... I'd probably say like a 6.5. Like a lot of other people, I despise the mission structure, bland locations, and generic enemies, and frustrating implementation of paid DLC that took up the lion's share of this game. Yet, I desperately wanted to like all of the parts of this game that weren't live service related. But with time, even that soured. The Kate Bishop DLC came out and dashed my hopes of things getting better with time, because it just... That DLC sucked. Doubled down on all the aspects of the game I hated and dumped the ones I liked. It was all massive, boring areas of deserted wasteland full of. This isn't my computer. This is his video, by the way. Generic robots and uninteresting cookie cutter mission objectives. So I gave up on it. I didn't want to play Hawkeye or Black Panther because I could already tell those were going to be more of the same. I predicted that you wouldn't even be able to go into Wakanda, just the jungle surrounding it, because. You know, then you Dude, this is hard. not. There's no way this is this dude's video. Design release. Sure, two of this type of mission. You be all massive, be able to go in time into this game again. Because you know, then you'd have to have art design. This is this is literally this guy's video, by the way. And levels and creative architecture, and that's all too hard. It's easier to just copy and paste trees on a warped terrain and then put on a dirt or snow or grass texture and call it a day. The only way I knew I would put any time into this game. Grass texture and call it a day. The only way I knew I would put any time into this. Game again was when they added Spider Man because. He looks like, oh my God, I never saw. So when Spider-Man got announced, I never, uh, uh, like I mentioned, I, I have it on Xbox slash Game Pass. Spider-Man's not on Xbox. So I never got a full look of what he looks like. I lo Holy shit, he looks dumb. I love that character and I wanted to see how they'd handle him. And I gotta say, after playing a fair amount of the Spider-Man DLC on PS4, I can confidently say this was the final nail in the coffin. I take back every nice thing I said about Marvel's Avengers. This game cannot be saved. According to numerous news sources, this game didn't break even for a profit and is still struggling to recoup its losses on the inflated budget after a miserable launch and the vast majority of its player base abandoning it shortly after its release. Sure, the interest spikes up again a little with each new expansion, and this game does have its diehards that stick with it. Yeah. Again, a little with each new expansion, and this game does have its. Many people ask me what it's like being the number one Marvel's Avengers streamer. It ain't easy. Keeping a dying game in the social digest is a big undertaking. But this responsibility was best bestowed upon me when the people of Twitch recognized me as 2021's most important influencer. I don't even know who this guy is. Who is... Whatever. Avengers is still in the red for a game of this size, and I doubt this DLC will fix that. Spider-Man... Hang on. Uh, now I want to look. Avengers player count steam. Are you fucking serious? Oh my god. That's really bad. Holy shit. Man is a 
PlayStation exclusive, meaning Xbox, PC, and Nintendo 64 players can't access it. Which Nintendo 64. Which massive corners out of fairness and having no story or bosses for Spider-Man. The entire mission chain is just tasks like use this attack 20 times, complete two of this type of mission, use this other attack 15 times. The best you get in terms of story is the few tiny dialogue scenes here and there, the longest of which being his introduction so it doesn't <sighs> show up it showed up and no one talked about it. You also get some audio logs. Those are... Yeah. August 12th. Woo! Okay, not paranoid. That guy was definitely following me. Well, following Peter. Now he's... Confused and looking around. That's how I feel right now. Right above you, dude. No, nothing. Well, at least that probably means he hasn't seen me change outfits. Huh. How long has he been here? Who the fuck is he talking about? He spends so much time nervously stuttering through all of these that I can read them in about a quarter of the time it takes him to say them, so maybe just like don't look at the screen when you listen to them. How the Earth's mightiest have fallen. They're so destitute now they can't even afford to fully render this opening montage and instead it's one of those cheap motion comic things you get in low budget license games all the time when they have corners to cut. Yeah, fucking mobile games. The biggest superhero character of all time and the biggest movie franchise of all time and they're having to resort to some of the old chop chop. <sighs> Come on guys, I'm talking to my fans right now. What? No disrespect to this voice actor, but he should have not gotten this position. Sorry about that. But yeah, I've been a little busy. He literally sounds like Spider-Man, like if he had a sidekick. And I've sort of not really kind of been working with the Avengers. As a quote-unquote social media influencer, making Spider-Man a social media influencer is by far the cringiest trend, and it's instantly dating itself even worse than him working at a print newspaper. His voice isn't the worst I've ever heard, and Sean Chiplock did a great job with what he was given. Don't worry, I'm an expert in hanging out. Get it? Hanging? Oh, what's his name? Expert in and at a print newspaper. His voice isn't the worst I've ever heard, and Sean Chiplock did. Sean Chiplock. Sean Chip Luck. Uh, movies and shows. What's a review? Let's see. What has he fucking played? Diablo. What? Oh my god, are you serious? Yo, rest in peace. Oh shit, he was in Toradora? Monster Hunter. What the fuck? He was in P Detective Pikachu? Holy shit, he's been in a lot of games. World Walker, oh, I guess. And Smite. Killer Instinct. Who's, who's Rash? Oh, fuck. <laughs> I guess. There's a Maple Story, Maple Story 2, Pokemon Masters, uh, Catherine Full Body, Persona 5 Royal, Genshin. He's probably making a shit ton of money off that. Guilty Strive. Demon Slayer, Marvel's Avengers. Damn. This guy's been a lot of shit. Did a great job with what he was given. Don't worry. I'm an expert in hanging out. Get it? Hanging? Well, I thought it was funny. But the voice direction seems to have been sound as nervous and scared as possible. 
probably because a lot of more contemporary Spider-Man media portrays the character as ultra flanderized uwu soft boy small bean Wattpad fanfic twink man. It's not Tom's. What the fuck did he just say? Because a lot of more contemporary Spider-Man media portrays the character as ultra flanderized uwu soft boy small bean uwu fanfic twink man. It's not Tom's fault. It's just every single molecule surrounding him. But unfortunately, the end result is this Spider-Man sounding like a combination of Robbie Damon and Drake Bell, which aren't exactly my two favorites. It's too high-pitched for a Spidey that's meant to be in college, and it sounds weird coming out of this shredded buff 90s bod Spidey. I think pitching it up was a mistake. I'd like to hear Sean Chiplock do this character again, maybe a little differently, because I feel like he does have potential. Well, it's a big part of this game, and it's become synonymous with this character, so let's start by digging into his open closet full of alternate costumes. I took pity on this financial disaster and decided to spot them 50 bucks for booze money after not spending a dime on this game ever because I got a review code. Now I could afford to put all of my uh -huh. characters in skins that look halfway decent instead of the terrible default costumes, and I got myself the old trusty Spidey armor, as well as the Secret Wars suit. I think this being so prominent in every video game for the past 10 years has been kind of ironic because its original appearance in the comics is limited to these two panels. This is the most you ever see of it. Just the, just the hand True. in this one. That and the concept art in the back of the book and like an unused cover. And that somehow got a full skin, but not the big time or future foundation suits. They just recolored the bulletproof suit and there's no black costume. How easily you were showed up by Fortnite of all things. The noir suit is some. Because Fortnite has money. That's the best way I can explain that. They have money. Somehow available just recolors of it that look like crap i think i have to wait for it to be added to the shop which is mad these skins are fucking garbage what the what is that big ass hoodie but hey at least it's the first time this has ever actually had a trench coat they had cape physics already nailed down because of thor so they could just slap it on i guess and the rest of these look like bootleg rainbow colored bullshit these are worse than bootleg what I predicted the suits would be like i like the middle one uh, that's a good one. They have costumes that that's... have mustard yellow, sky blue, and gold all mixed together. Or like purple and orange masks that no one would ever want. And of course they put in Webman. You're pathetically predictable. What the hell were they thinking with this design of the Parker Industries suit? They connected the eyes in the middle? You have your mother's eyes. <laughs> So take the handful of good cosmetics and throw the rest in the trash. It's good to know having zero faith in this game's level of restraint paid off. I will admit, however, that this default costume you get at the very start is the most scrum diddly umptious phantasmastical Spider-Man suit I've seen in years. It has nice materials, the seams are in sensible places, the webs look neat and clean and visible at a distance, and the colors are really nice. And it's cool to have a relatively buff Spidey in something after he's been portrayed as more stringy and thin in recent stuff. I love this costume. I wish this is what the movie costumes look like. Spoiler. And then to come <laughs> we have this atrocity. It's like every bad Spider-Man. Okay, his complaint about Tom being small is because he thinks of the 90s cartoon where he's like six foot and fucking ripped like uh chris hemsworth no designed ever lumped into one costume also the right skin is fucking garbage panel lining on the blue parts that serves no purpose chunky black lines bordering the sh that literally looks like mark got drawn drawn on his chest like the 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 base of the spider looks all right it's the outline of the legs looks stupid shoulders and everything else planting <sighs> the red in ridiculous ways that don't make sense and hideous logos on the front and back that for some reason remind me of the Mega Bloks logo. I can't explain it. Want to hear me run on this for a few more minutes? Here's a time code to skip that. I have pages and pages of material. Everyone's talking about the war on Christmas. I want to talk about the war on Spider-Man's fucking sleeves. Almost every <laughs> time we've seen them for the last decade, they've been segmented with black or blue lines or omitted entirely. There's an argument to be made about modernizing superhero costumes like taking the trunks off Batman or Superman, 
But why is this completely benign design element recently accrued such vitriolic fucking ire and hatred from every concept artist from here to Timbuktu? Every goofy asshole with an art degree and a drawing tablet thinks they're completely reinventing the wheel by slicing up this part of the suit like it's a bold new choice that's never been done before, and then proceed to jerk themselves off with their newly minted overwhelmingly blue abomination as the checks from Sony and Marvel roll in. What's the reasoning? Is it because the webs on his biceps are hard to draw when he bends his elbows and everyone's gotten lazy? Bunch of bitches. Hashtag restore Spider-Man's sleeves. Why would you remove the belt if you were going to just put big lines on it to imply where the belt should be? Doesn't that, like, contradict the whole point of removing it? All you're doing is drawing attention to the fact that it's not there. By having it cut this... Okay, so... I, and this is just a, uh, an opinion regarding the shoulders. It's because they want this it make it look like it's a suit showing the red instead of it being just a, a, a skin tight suit from top to bottom. Again, I could be wrong or maybe they're trying to show that, you know, he's got, you know, the shoulders perking up on the sides because it looks like be, from the bicep. To the shoulder, it looks more in, like, it's like he's got big-ass shoulders, but his arms are smaller. That's the only way I can... Or he could be right. Parts too far up his belly, and it gives the impression the suit doesn't fit properly. That suit looks like it has a fucking belly button. Your big idea on how to reinvent the most iconic superhero costume was to make it seem like he was too tall for it? I swear to God, they really thought about giving him toe shoes. Oh, oof. Jesus. The thought occurred to them in the process. I just know it. It was the only thing they had the sense not to go through with. Fuck this thing. How <laughs> you were what, showing up by what they had the sense Hang on. not to go through with. Fuck. I don't honestly care for it, but the suit is honestly not that bad. I am mostly exaggerating for comic purposes because I like ranting about Spider-Man costume design. Dude, I want to hit this guy up on Twitter. How do, how do I find some of these recent design philosophies tiresome for being unoriginal and repetitive? I feel like the default Spider-Man costume can be redesigned, but in more unique and creative ways. This thing. How easily you were showed up by Fortnite of all things. Yeah, because again, Fortnite has money. So anyway, let's talk about the gameplay. The combat feels about the same as any other character in this game with your strong and light attacks and your constant button mashing and occasional dodge. His moves are very reminiscent of how he fights with the Insomniac games with very similar animations, but they're still relegated to the same two buttons instead of a more specific command. So doing these moves doesn't feel as satisfying and deliberate even if the combat looks about the same visually as the better Spider-Man. Well, it looks the same, but like, 60% slower. Dollar store ass Spider-Man. Swinging isn't terrible, but it's not really great either. You can't influence your direction too much while in mid-swing, so it's damn near impossible to swing around a corner fluidly, and you have to readjust yourself between swings instead. It's very slow and heavy feeling. You you literally look like a pendulum. Except you're like you're going forward. Then you go a little bit forward again, then a little bit forward again, a little bit forward, like... It has a set height limit in the game. <sighs> oof, man. To anything. They don't even just go all the way into the sky. You can see them actually attached to nothing. Ironically, swinging in the city or in a tight corridor is less fun than just an open field with nothing around you for miles. At least here, you don't slam into something constantly and you can start to pick up a little speed. But when you're anywhere else, it's just too unruly to get movement with nuance. It's just underwhelming and not really fun or dynamic. How easily you were showed up by Fortnite of all things for something. Because money. Called impact webbing, this sure. And good game developers. Feels fucking limp. Playing multiplayer is once again fun, not because the game is fun, but it's fun hanging out with people I like. The game is just something to keep your hands busy. I might as well be playing with a fucking Rubik's Cube. Or I could just build a Lego set and then rip it apart piece by piece and then build it again to simulate playing this game. True. Again, true. My god, true. 
repetition. In the time since I played Avengers last, I got into Fortnite because of that Alien and Predator DLC, and I now have a frame of reference of how a competent live service game works. It has frequent updates and new content, the microtransactions aren't overwhelming, and you can still have fun with the game without spending money on it. And the progression through the battle pass is simple and understandable. The tasks to gain experience points are easy to grasp, and you can just jump in and do them every round. The level 100 True. unlock every season seems like something actually achievable that you can get if you just play a little bit every day, which keeps you coming back. And Avengers progression is an obfuscated slog with confusing challenge instructions, challenges that take way too long to complete for not nearly enough reward, and gameplay that's stiff and repetitive. I want to put this game down forever, 30 minutes after turning it on every single time. In fact, this game makes me sleepy. Every time I tried playing it for this video, I just wanted to stop and go lay down. Square's Avengers is a secret government op to pump melatonin waves through your <laughs> ethernet cord directly into your brain. You're too sleepy to realize how terrible everything's gotten outside of your home. This just isn't how you design fun progression. Every task is tedious and takes forever. The challenge card keeps throwing terminology at me for certain attacks I need to do on enemies, but it never explains what the hell each one is. There's dozens of different moves with different names, and I have to go digging around in the four pages of skill trees to figure out which one I'm being asked to do, only to find out it's a move I haven't unlocked yet and have to grind for hours to obtain just so I can even start a percentage of that daily challenge. And then, on top of that, it's the mission chain that does pretty much the same thing. I have to defeat high-value targets from AIM three times? Well, I'll be damned if I can figure out who they're talking about without just googling it and seeing where they spawn. Okay, so, just enemies with the skulls above their heads. Why not mark a place on the map where those enemies spawn for me so I don't have to go guess where they are or look up the answer? Take it easy on me if you're not going to make it fun. I think the reason this game failed is because it's just so inaccessible. You have to spend so much time learning how to navigate these menus and what everything means and how it wants you to progress. You can't just pick it up and play and that's incredibly alienating for some people. Maybe they're so desperate for cash the idea is to make the gameplay so boring and- It- so with- on Xbox, we're ignoring the Spider-Man thing. It's- when I play it, it when I played it, it was more of I play so I would log so I beat the story, I log in, I have I I play a store just because I think his hammer is like the one f more fun mechanics, and I just jump straight to multiplayer. Like I don't even bother fucking do I don't even look for dailies. I don't look for items or anything. I just turn my brain off. So I mean, realistically, the guy's right. It's basically melatonin for you, but. I think the the reason why it's so inaccessible it's because the game they takes they took so many ideas that didn't mesh well with the other ideas they had which led to them making basically a hot pile of shit tedious that you just cave in and buy levels on the challenge card with real money to skip all the bullshit and get the rewards which makes sense until you realize you'd be spending money to get cosmetics for use in a gameplay that you hate because it's boring. Oh wow, I sure do look awesome in this skin doing the same capture the point task in the same four warehouses over and over, fighting the same generic robots for the millionth time. You want to swing through New York as Spider-Man? Well, there's already a game for that. All you get True. is the same five forests on shuffle. Oh, this one has snow in it. Fuck you! <laughs> The mission chain is boring and tedious to the point that I don't see any real advantage in finishing it. They don't have any bosses for Spider-Man to fight, but they do name drop Mark Raxton a bunch of times and have him appear in one tiny dialogue scene at the end just so he could not be Molten Man. So like, what's the point of all that even? Why am I playing this? I was starting up the Spider-Man mission chain with my sister and my fiance both watching me, and I was like, kind of bragging and joking, and I said, Hey, can you believe how weird my job is? I'm technically working right now. And my little sister looked at the screen and deadass just said, Yeah, this definitely feels like work. And she's right. This is not, <laughs> not fun. Playing this feels like a chore. I don't want to beat it just so I can say I beat it. And the reward is a costume that I clearly don't like, so why bother? 
They didn't put any real effort making this DLC fun, so why should I play it? I like Spider-Man, sure, but not enough to be bored for hours and hours on end for some stupid sense of completionism. If they're not going to try, then neither am I. I'm done with Marvel's Avengers, and you should be too. Yeah, I, I uninstalled my shit, like, months ago. <laughs> Don't spend money on this, not even for Spidey. Just go buy Guardians of the Galaxy instead because it's a much more entertaining, polished, and passionate product. You can see love in that game. Marvel's Avengers doesn't love the source material. It doesn't love its player base because it lies to them and then rolls it back with the source material. It doesn't love its... Marvel's Avengers adds paid XP boost after slowing, slowing leveling and promising cosmetic-only microtransactions. It lies to them and then rolls it back True. Marvel's Avengers removes pay-to-win microtransactions after backlash. After a recent fan outcry, Marvel's Avengers is removing paid boost paid boosters due to the claims that it created pay-to-win scenarios in the superhero title. Called out for it. <sighs> this game only loves the almighty dollar, and it's not even going to put in the effort to earn that money. Vote with your wallet. If you don't want games like this being made anymore, then don't play it just to hate on it for your YouTube channel like a jackass. Just uh -huh. avoid it entirely. Avengers deserves a hell of a lot better of an experience than whatever this offers. What a boring, depressing nightmare. Jesus Christ. Hmm. It's crazy. I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm going to be honest. It, I pretty much agree with what he said. I'm just saying, like, if you're playing with friends and you don't take it seriously, but you're wanting, you know, try to get the characters that you want to max level, then play it. But at the same time, know that this game is fucking terrible, basically. Like, that's my thing. Now, let's see what else I got. <laughs> 